Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and this is a closing market wrap for Monday, August 19th, 2019. Uh, we'll look at just a few charts, a couple different time frames. Uh, what we have today is another tag at the top of those uh, bounce zones from exactly two weeks ago today. Market bottom back here hit a low on August 5th, and at the time I laid out uh, bounce target zones, which range from the bottom of those gaps right there that day, uh, to up to uh, on QQQ here 188.37. So we had a little bit of a momentum fueled overshoot on that big candle leading up there. And today we gapped up to that level and it stopped cold all day. I'll zoom in here real quick. You can see these are all 60 minute candles. We're on a 60 minute chart. Uh, so we closed at 188.30. Uh, it's technical analysis working for you. So that's really more of the same. We're stuck in this sideways grind right now closed right at resistance. Uh, let's look at, take a look at SPY as well. Alright, SPY, I'll box in the zones for you. The 60 minute chart here and we have the bounce target zones up running up from uh, the bottom of that gap at about 288.22 up to 294, that upper line there. And uh, so far uh, we fell a little shy of that today. So QQQ hit the, the, the upper end of that resistance level. Uh, SPY you can see fell a little bit shy there, uh, 294 is the top. So either way we're still in those, um, well the big trading range is this. So we still need to either make a you know impulsive and definitive break above there and close above those levels and then you have the downtrend lines just ahead. There's, there's plenty of overhead resistance as well if the markets can take that out but that's where we're at today and uh, let's take a look, zoom out to the daily charts. So this is what it looks like bigger picture and this you know remains a story for the last couple weeks here. We have the sideways trading range. Let me try to box that in for you a little closer here. Uh, so there it is up to the top of that bounce zone down to the bottom and uh, to you know trigger the next wave of selling we need to take out those lows from August 5th and in those lows you know we've had several tests to the downside as well as the upside so uh, in SPY I have below this trend line we're still back testing the trend line off the lows from the 24th when we look at QQQ same thing here we have uh, QQQ holding above that trend line it depends I could pull the trend line down like this uh, what we're doing there is we don't capture this reaction low like we did on SPY right here from, uh, was that late May, early June, but we do have about three reactions here. I'll say this, not the most valid trend line because there's only a handful of reactions. The more reactions you have on a trend line, for example, here's one, uh, the more valid it is. So we had a lot of reactions on this trend line uh, from above. We broke it and then we had a lot of reactions from below while we back tested and finally after back testing for a little while we, we that started moving lower. So uh, right now I'm putting a higher weighting on the uh, price support levels again so to box the range it's the recent highs to the recent lows over the last couple weeks. Okay sorry I had to pause the video there for distraction but uh, that so that's that's it basically need to make a you know definitive pop to the upside or downside uh, still favor the downside resolution other things to watch potential bullish crossover in the PPO uh, but let me show you one other thing I'm watching here. I uh, covered this today uh, in a post earlier from members. Uh, XLK is a tech sector ETF. And, uh, you know, as I said many times in the past, when tech breaks, the market breaks. It happened right here. We had a clear uptrend line. We had a breakdown there. That triggered the whole 25 plus percent drop in XLK in the tech sector leading into the January or December 24th lows. Right here again, we had a very clean, well-defined uptrend line that broke, uh, followed by a 12% drop off that divergent high. And then so far, once again, we had it here. If you didn't catch it on the Fed day, we had a back test that was highlighted there, give you a second opportunity to get in, and that was followed by a 9% drop. So now, uh, remember, XLK is by far the largest sector in the uh, S&P 500 and NASDAQ 100, uh, so it's the most important sector in the stock market. And so if you look at it this way, what we had here, here, I'll take all the lines away for a second. We had a breakout to new all-time highs. This was our previous reaction high right here. So at this point, you had a breakout uh, right here, and that went to all-time highs. Uh, as I say often, and it did happen, you know, breakouts that occur with negative divergence and overbought conditions have a much higher rate of failure than those that don't. So we went on uh, after this point. 
the breakout technically failed right here when we crossed back down below that breakout point. Remember, that was the breakout level. So we've come back, and a lot like if you take that box tool, that's the same, similar story to uh, QQQ and SPY. We've had several tests. So far, this is simply a back test of that level. This was a failed breakout, aka bull trap, and we're, we've been back testing it. Now, if they can regain it, that's certainly uh, you know a key level that that would be near-term bullish. Especially, you want to see SPY, QQQ, and XLK all get back above those recent highs, and not just intraday. You want to see a solid green close. One or two would be better. Uh, to me and uh, members, I did a video today, which I encourage you to watch on uh, some. Uh, your favorite breadth indicators, looking at market internals. Uh, so that kind of paints the bigger picture for me. Um, but near term, uh, like I said, that would be certainly bullish if they can take that and close it up. Uh, you know, the higher they can close it, the more l less likely it is to prove to be a whipsaw signal. And of course, a downside break would be bearish. So those are the levels I'm watching. And it's all about, uh, or you know, not all about, but uh, pretty important levels of recent highs. We've had a lot of tests. If you look back, again, this is just going back the last few weeks, and you can see how many times the mark, both the markets and the tech sector, have kicked back to those levels. So they're definitely uh, significant from a you know technical perspective. So that's what I'm watching there. And finally, uh, what I'm zeroing in on the futures. Uh, these are the charts I posted this morning. I even posted these last night in the trading room. Uh, we've been walking up these very well-defined trend lines. They, they show a lot better on the future. So what we're looking at here, this is NQ, the NASDAQ 100 uh, futures, 60-minute chart. You can see a, a clean uptrend line, lots of reactions. We've been walking up this uptrend line since last, I believe that's last Thursday right there. And I said what you need to see is a solid break and or solid 60-minute close, an impulsive break. Uh, just before the close, and I posted this on the uh, in the comments section on the front page under one of the earlier posts today, uh, we had uh, ES and NQ move below these levels. I'm on NQ right now. We'll get to ES in a second. That's the same, same level. That is exactly what you don't want to see for a breakout. That's that's unimpulsive. That's not an impulsive breakout. We had just very, very low volume, uh, no conviction. We closed there a 60-minute candle, but it's so small you really have to zoom in to even see it, and especially the one after that. So although technically we're below the trend line, that's not a um, that's not an ideal sell signal. In other words, it's much more likely to prove to be a whipsaw signal. Um, you could still get some impulsive selling from here, but that's what you want to see. You want to see something that looks like this after a breakdown of a trend line like that. Otherwise, as I pointed out earlier today, we had an intra-session break, but we failed to close. Intra-candle, I should say, meaning these are 60-minute candles. The skinny part is the candlestick shadow. And if you drop below and then snap back up, all that really matters is that closing candlestick if you're trading the 60-minute time frame. So there it is. You have quite a few reactions on that level. Uh, a break below, but not impulsive. Add to that, we also uh, closed or held that 77.22-ish uh, support, which is a pretty big level. You can see uh, reactions from above back here, a lot of reactions from above there. And uh, so therefore, that's the story on uh, NQ. So I'll be watching those overnight in a future session to see if we can get some downside traction. Otherwise, if they snap back above there, you have this downtrend line you want to watch. That's our next resistance. And then you can see some levels overhead there. Uh, that's uh, the NASDAQ 100 futures. This is ES. Similar trend line. Let's zoom in a little bit here. There you go. You can see same story. Uh, we limped below it just shortly before the close on almost no volume and uh, certainly not impulsive and so we have to this will be continued tomorrow we do have a bearish cross that's one thing I was looking for I call it a high level PPO crossover this was a high level bearish PPO cross right here and this was a high level P bearish PPO cross and the other thing that I mentioned this morning uh, on the site I posted a chart zoom back out on these futures if you look at uh, the over overbought conditions now normally on an RSI you'd have a, a level it's a line at the 70 level that indicates overbought but I always say this every security every stock every index on different time frames might have you might have to use different levels so if you just draw a line right here around the 80 level you can see that's about what caps the advances on uh, ES and NQ so if we go back here you circle 
even if they're just little corrections usually when you get up to that level there you can see that that marks tops and um, uh, here we go we yep we hit it right there almost right there and we're there again so that's usually where you're seeing topping action come uh, when you get that overbought here again it's well above the the typical 70 level which would be right here somewhere and uh, that was ES same story on NQ so that's it so we're overbought uh, at uh, overbought and uh, right at about trend line support a little below it right now there's a line I just gave you for NQ showing you it's a little actually closer to about 83 and again same story you can go back for a while and see pretty much every time you get there it, it just, and I always say this, overbought is not a, a sell signal in itself. It's merely an indication that things are getting ahead of themselves. And, uh, you know, you're most likely going to get a correction or some period of consolidation. So uh, favor that reversal there. Resistance overhead as well. If they happen to pop above that trend line, like I said, 78.18. Uh, some pretty, pretty decent resistance coming in on, on uh, NQ as well. So we'll watch this. Those are the levels I'm watching for tomorrow. And again, remember that we closed that resistance today. So uh, one way or another, we'll probably gap up above it or down tomorrow. And based on these trend lines and everything else, the overbought conditions, I favor a, a, you know, a move down in the futures overnight and then a gap down on the indexes tomorrow. But uh, we'll see. We'll pick it up there. This has been Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart. Hope you enjoyed it.